Welcome back everyone, it's me, Matt. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Thanks for joining me on today's video. Now, I uh, have been in the artillery for about two years now. As many of you know, I'm a British Army veteran, tank mechanic at heart. I've always loved tanks. But as transitioning to the Canadian Armed Forces, I am a very proud gunner to this day. Uh, recently promoted to bombardier, and I'm really, really passionate about the artillery. My grandfather served in the Royal Artillery in World War II, operating anti-aircraft weapons, and to me it's true to heart to say that I have a family tie to the artillery, but never really acted upon that when joining the British Army. However, today, I want to talk a little bit about how the artillery in Canada works. Now, there was a fantastic made by our brothers in the West, 3-9 brigade uh, in social media from the Canadian forces exactly breaking down the artillery operation and on which the guns work the uh, you know all the different disciplines that we have within the artillery work and I'd like to break it down a little bit more raw um, when I say raw you know really deep dive into exactly what is happening the video is about seven minutes long uh, they did a fantastic job of it honestly the footage is crisp it's beautiful whoever is the cinematographer or the person who produced this video seriously hats off to you you've represented in my regiment and and the regiment of uh, that's been showcased in this video very very well and uh, it's nice to see that the Canadian Forces is really looking into bringing the troops to the forefront of social media more because I think a lot of people are quite uh, you know oblivious to how things like this work they see the guns firing and they don't realize that there's a lot more to it than just you know rounds being sent down range now the individual who's uh, you know kind of narrating this video and, and hosting it also does a fantastic job he started on the gun line he says as a gunner worked through the ranks and now second lieutenant um i must admit it's a little disheartening to know that i wasn't able to take part in something like this but you know they were in a beautiful setting they're in the states the perfect area for gunnery you can see the rounds landing here nice open flat terrain ops can see everything that's going on it's a really nice environment i would love to fire on a range like that but we have one here in alberta which we're part of 4-1 brigade which is my brigade uh, we have Suffield, which is a British Army training unit uh, attached to it, but primarily CFB Suffield is a huge open spanned landmass where we get to fire all sorts of projectiles all over the place. So as much as they get to have fun open train in this uh, United States environment, we get to have a lot of fun here in Alberta too. So what I want to do is go over the video and kind of break down the kind of things he's going over and give you a little bit more information from an actual uh, first-hand perspective. They don't have enough time to really deep dive into the more heavy informational settings of some of the disciplines he's going into but for those of you who are aspiring to be gunners or maybe you already are gunners and just want to you know listen to what i have to say about artillery then here's the place to be because you're going to learn a lot about you know what is actually happening what they're doing uh, you're seeing a broad overview of exactly what they're doing but uh again hats off to the canadian forces for producing this video it's just it looks incredible i would love to have some time and resources to make my own video on the artillery more first hand you know instead of me just sitting at my computer right now talking about it but maybe in the future we'll have something coming up i don't know but let's get into this video then and start breaking it down a little deeper so we can see exactly how the artillery works for Canada. Yeah, I stand, I'm talking about. <laughs> My name is 2nd Lieutenant Lloyd with the 15th Field Artillery Regiment. Today I'm going to take you behind the scenes. I'm currently at the Yakima Training Center in Washington. My regiment is out here for the weekend firing their guns. I've been in the artillery for seven years. I started off as a gunner on the front line and worked my way up. I've seen every part of the artillery. I want to show you how it all comes together. First, we need to look at how the guns are sighted. These are artillery reconnaissance technicians. They're the first ones on the ground. They're the ones that actually figure out where the guns are going to be placed. This is done by using sophisticated military survey equipment. When the guns arrive, the recce technicians will work with each individual gun to figure out exactly where each artillery piece is laying. Why are we three mils off? So let's start off with Recce Tech. So Recce Tech is a discipline or subdivision trade-off group inside the artillery that are there to do exactly what he just said. So to know exactly where we need to fire as an artillery position or battery, we need to know exactly where we are and where we are in relation to the ground and the land that we're about to fire upon. Recce techs, and I'm not a subject matter expert as being a recce tech, because I'm not one, uh, and personally it's not the route I want to go in the artillery, definitely not my style, but as a recce tech, you're basically plotting uh, the position of which you're firing from, 
uh, for the guns to relate to. So almost sort of a benchmark point, a datum on which you can refer to. Uh, so when the guns come into sight, they know exactly where they need to be pointing, the directions they need to be pointing, the bearings and the angles. I'm not going to get into fire discipline and into the technicalities of how this all works because that would be a very long video. But Recce Tech, in terms of if it's something you want to be or if you're interested in, it is definitely a more technical based trade in the artillery, as you can tell by the trade group Recce Tech. You are a technician, which therefore means you would go on a specialist course to become this particular trade group inside the artillery. And uh, you need to be pretty good at some math. You need to know, you know, basic uh, angles. You need to understand how optics work. There's a little bit more to it uh, than other different trade groups within the artillery. I have a lot of people who uh, went through the course, thoroughly enjoyed it. I have a lot of people in our battery that thoroughly enjoy being Rehitex. They enjoy being the first on the ground, getting ahead of the battery, setting in and kind of laying in the ground and making sure the gun position is able to fire quickly and effectively. So if it's something you're interested in, definitely um, ask me some questions. I can get you some information. I'd love to try and, you know, uh, give you resources to allow you to look into what you want to be. You know, being a gunner is definitely... Uh, the most exciting job, I would say, in the in the army for me, and that's just my personal opinion. Uh, and Recce Tech really just broadens up the whole sort of more basically technological side of things. You have some pretty important equipment that you'd be using to try and get those guns laid in position. And if you have that kind of mindset, it's definitely the way to go. Another thing you need to think about with the Recce Tech side of things is you are Recce. Remember, reconnaissance technician. So as a reconnaissance technician, you need to be aware that you are going to be ahead of the battle group, and in some cases, in a dangerous environment. You are going to be on your own, deployed as a small team, setting up this optic and setting up this equipment to allow you to prepare for the gun line. That being said, you're in a high hostile environment and could potentially be in engagements if you encounter the enemy prior to setting up this position. So, you know, as a recce tech, you're going to be a little bit more invested into the infantry style of tactics. You're going to have to be uh, proficient at the skills and drills uh, that you would not normally as much use on the gun line, such as, you know, section attacks, uh, individual fire and maneuver, all these sort of things that can defend yourself from an engagement if you were to get there your camouflage and concealment, your tactics on which moving into a position, all these sort of things that you need to think about too. It's not all about just math and you know laying in optics and laying in sights. You need to be good at being a soldier first, knowing how to operate in a tactical environment. And it can be uh, quite appealing to a lot of people. They like that sort of environment where you know, you're a little bit ahead of the battle group. You're almost sort of the tip of the spear almost for the, for the artillery. And that's definitely a way that uh, you can think about it. It's not always the sort of the boring side that people think when they look at guys plotting the land like land surveillance, which is really in some regard kind of what you're doing. So if this is something you're interested in doing, definitely ask some questions to me and I'll try my best to get the information. So there is a certain process and the way in which uh, a gun battery sets up, and again, I'm not going to go too heavy into that right now, but one thing I do want to point out that this video does not depict very well, at all I'd say, is the sense of urgency that it happens within the artillery. There's a couple of points that are referenced later on in the video, but the key to being in the artillery is getting your job done at the utmost level of accuracy and the highest level of speed. The reason for this is that if you are an artillery position, you are extremely exposed. Let's just look at this picture right now. Look at the hillside in the distance. It doesn't take much for an infantry platoon, a tank platoon, which is the artillery's worst enemy, to pop over that hillside. As you can see, the gunners right now are setting up their gun lines, so they're laying in the guns, preparing to get uh, the angles ready for uh, you know laying in and sighting in on the guns and recording their uh, C of A, all that sort of stuff, or center of arc. As I said, not going to go into the technicalities too much here, but the guys are fairly laissez-faire in this video, and that's okay. They're in a training environment. Sometimes we take things a little slower, especially if we're trying to sort of refresh ourselves or get into the, uh, you know, the swing of things again. But this is all done in a realistic setting, especially when you're going through sort of DP1 or your int your introduction to the artillery training at Mach 10, at the fastest speed possible. Because you need to be able to get these guns into action, provide fire support as quickly as possible and as accurately as possible. So doing all this stuff as fast as possible is, is important, but if you can't do it properly at that speed, then you're completely redundant to firing up the guns because 
you're going to cause risk to either not completing your mission or your fire mission, which is providing support to the uh, All Arms Battle Group, or you could potentially kill your own guys, which is uh, the worst fear of any gunner in the world. So just remember that if you are willing to join the artillery, that it's not as sort of chilled and laid back that you're looking at right now. Trust me, the people that are in this picture right now that you see, if in a high tempo, realistic environment, you're going to be sweating, you're going to be extremely tired, because moving this amount of steel off a truck like that, and the amount of equipment that needs to come off at the same time, takes a lot of work for seven people to do. And you think, but Matthias, seven people, that's a lot of people to move all this stuff. Agreed, but everybody has their own specific job and purpose, and there is a lot to do when setting up these guns. So just something to consider that you really do need to be aware that it is a high paced, very fast, very physically demanding job, which, you know, in certain parts of this video, you're not quite seeing. So something to be aware of. Once the guns are ready, it's up to the observation post to call in the targets. So right now we're on our way to the observation post. If you didn't know, most of the time, soldiers actually shooting the artillery can't actually see where the rounds are landing. These forward observers, they're the ones that actually see the rounds land. They're the ones that actually guide the rounds onto the target. You're in the way. Right now, we're several kilometers away from the gun line on an isolated hilltop. We're much further to the front, and you can see out the area that they're calling in rounds. Just ahead, you'll see the bomb is blowing up. From here, we can see the enemy and identify where the target actually is. After the guns fire, the forward observers will literally see the shots land. So here we are at the second discipline that he talks about during this video in the artillery, which is the forward observers. Some of you like to call them foos, uh, but at the end of the day, these are people that are laying in the guns for where they need to shoot. They are providing the information to the uh, battery to know exactly what they want to shoot, where they're going to shoot it, how long they're going to shoot it for, what they want to shoot it with, etc, etc. They have a lot to decipher. There is a lot of tactical involvement here. So you may, if you are part of a Foo Party or Forward Observation Party, be attached to an infantry platoon, a armored platoon, a combat arm of some kind that request or require artillery support. So you have to have some <laughs> social interaction too here and the skills to work with other people, other trades, because it's important. They are the ones at the end of the day normally requesting for artillery and you need to be able to interact with those people really effectively. Another big part that appeals to people for the OP uh, or the observation post with the forward observation party is that, again, you are isolated. You're in your own little team, small team, that is ahead of the battle group, ahead of the battery, and being able to observe the enemy. Physically seeing rounds land on target, it's pretty cool. It uh, sends the uh, hairs on the back of your neck going up, I can tell you that for sure. In Afghanistan, I'm watching rounds land on target. Uh, it's pretty cool. I was obviously not an artillery gunner back then, but we did request fire support, whether it be from the air or from the gunners on the ground. And seeing rounds land where you ask them to land is is pretty cool uh, and reinforces the fact that you're not alone and you've got people looking after you. So you being a part of that support and knowing that you're providing that fire support, it's pretty cool and pretty rewarding. As you can see, some of these troops have camouflage and concealment paint on their faces. You have to remember, similar to the recce tech, that you are very much in the way of potential enemy threat. If you're watching the enemy, there's more than no doubt that you're going to be able to be seen potentially by them too. So if you're going to be part of that, you know, that discipline, that department, you're going to need to know how to really effectively soldier. You were not going to be thrown into an observation post as a young troop. You will have to go do a specialist course. So again, these are things that are extra disciplines to being a standard gunner that you do from your basic course on DP1. So there are additional disciplines and skill sets that you're going to learn if you go on specific courses, uh, such as OP debt member. So if you want to be part of the observation post, once again, ask some questions to me. I'll be more than happy to give you some information. But if you want to be the one that's passing on that data to the command post and watching the round splash on target, then this is definitely the place you want to be. All of the data here is sent back to the command post with the radio. The command post is literally the brain of the operation. So the command post then, this is where really, I guess, the technical data that's coming in from all different directions is processed, validated, 
confirmed that it is true and accurate to prepare to be sent to the gun lines as what's called a fire mission. So a fire mission is the order that's given to the gun line to prepare them to actually engage targets and put projectiles down range. Now, if you wish to be a part of the command post, once again, you're going to have to go on your CP to tech course or CP technician, command post technician course, which is a little bit more involved, once again, with obviously data and the kind of information that you need to decipher from various different avenues that it's coming from. A lot of math involved here, folks. It is a little bit more brain power than it is brawn power. Definitely not where I really see myself. It's not my passion. It's not the core of what I want to be. But if you like to look at, you know, mathematical equations, you like to, uh, you know, take on lots amounts of information, you like working with radios because you're going to be working with them a lot, um, this is really the place for you. And again, it's something that you can broaden your horizons with. You don't always have to stick in one particular area or avenue of the artillery. You have some options available to you. So if you want to be in the command post, which is basically going to be a small vehicle with a box on the back of it, you're going to climb in the back of there. There's going to be a ton of tables, information, um, you know, different types of mathematical equations, computers that's going to allow you to prepare those fire missions for the gun line and get rounds on target. I know a lot of people that thoroughly enjoy the command post. I will definitely attest to the fact that you're in a little bit more of a Gucci environment, as we call it, which means you get to have a nice warm area for the most part, being in the back of the vehicle. If it's pouring down with rain and snow, you are going to be in the back of the vehicle or inside of a tent because you can't get your maps, computers, etc. wet. So it's nice to have that kind of comfort zone a little bit more. But you're still exposed. You still have to do other things on the command post that aren't as fun to do. Setting up, you know, your cam nets, setting up your radio antennas, setting up all the other bits and pieces you need to operate the command post effectively. You're also going to be involved with officers and uh, higher ranking officials. So if you don't have that ability to work well with others and you're not a uh, sociable person, also something you need to consider. You're going to be in the command post for long periods of time sometimes with people who are very high rank from you. Uh, you could be in there as a young bombardier working alongside a major or even higher potentially. And that's something you've got to be aware of. I know of people who have gone um, into roles like this and really struggle because they don't feel comfortable talking to their superiors. And you need to be because at the end of the day, you have to have that working relationship with the command post team together. Uh, sometimes high senior officials or ranking officials in the command post make mistakes. We're humans, we make mistakes, and you need to be the one that has the guts and the brawn to say, excuse me, sir, uh, I don't think that data is correct. Can you verify that what you just told me is correct? And then be like, oh yeah, fair point. Yeah, I was totally off by like 10 mils or whatever else, right? That's bad data, we call it, bad data. And you need to be able to challenge that because it's your job to. And if you don't feel comfortable, you're like, oh, he's, but he's my boss, he's a major, he's going to give me a hard time, he's going to, why? Did you, who do you think you're talking to, you know, gunner, bombardier? That's not how it is. So if you do have that fear, that's something you're going to want to get out of your system pretty quickly before you join into the uh, discipline of the command post. The command post will give out orders for ammunition, amount of shells, and direction. After that, it's up to each gun crew to do the shooting. Alright, we gotta make up for lost time. Woo! Let's get to the gun line. Am I right, Saeed? <laughs> He's dying back. I, I can just cross this a little bit. Oh, I hope I took the right road there. <laughs> Woo hoo! <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what that was all about, but that guy's laugh is, uh, it's like <laughs> nails on a chalkboard. Fair play though, at least he's having some fun with it with the troops in the vehicle. This is the gun line. This is where it all happens. Get that Final in. part with it, pull the lanyard. Oh, fire. 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 Getting those rounds on the target as fast as you can and getting out is the best oh. way to stay safe when you have any oh. artillery shooting back at you. Every member of the gun crew needs to be an absolute safe. Now, no word of a lie, we're already about 20 minutes of this video, so we're pushing it pretty hard here. And we're getting towards the juicy part, which I could literally talk about all day, 
because it's what I do, it's what I'm passionate about, it's what I love. Being on the guns. So we could talk about this literally all day. There's so much to discuss here. But some of the key points that I want to focus on is let's start off with the ammunition. So when you're on the gun line, of course, the key to actually doing what we need to do and the weapon of the artillery is the projectile that we're firing. The projectile is what you're seeing right now. He is about to load a high explosive 105mm projectile with a fuse attached. The fuse is which basically is detonating the projectile at the specific requirement that we want it to do and make it function as to when and what we want it to do. There's a little bit of uh, you know math involved here. Sometimes there's a little bit of uh, coordination that you have to have with other people to ensure that all this stuff lines up accurately. There are certain types of ammunition that require specialist kinds of attachments to them. If you eventually go into uh, the 155 or 155 millimeter howitzers, the M777s, there's more technology involved. You have specialist guns that you attach to the fuse and program the fuses. There's a lot going on just with the ammunition. We haven't even got to the gun yet. There's so much going on that you have to focus on. The big part of being a gunner in the artillery and the first things you learn of being part of a gunner is fire discipline. Everything has a strict process, rules, and I mean it like it's embedded in your bloodstream, to the point of which you have to remember everything to a T. There is no ifs, there's no buts, there's no grey areas. You will do everything exactly as you have been taught. You know, as an infantryman, there's a lot of flexibility and fluidity to the way in which you operate. If you want to take a hill, you take a hill. You go around the hill, you go around the hill. You go left, right, up, down, you know, crawl in, run in bayonet charge, lots of different options. In the artillery, it's not really quite like that. We have a strict process that you have to adhere to, and if you don't, you're going to get yourself, other people killed, or potentially not engage the people you do want to kill. So just starting with the ammunition, you have a lot to think about, but don't let it deter you. This is where you're actually going to be putting your hands on raw pieces of equipment that is going to potentially kill someone. That is the mission of the artillery, is to engage the enemy and destroy them with fire support. So, you know, when we talk about being a gunner and, you know, putting rounds down range, there's a lot more to it than just pulling the lanyard or the trigger of the gun. And I just want to reinforce that because once again in this video, it talks a little about, you know, you know, everybody's doing their own thing, but there is a strict process. And if you can't adhere to that, the artillery is definitely not for you. You said six, huh? Correct. Yeah. Oh. Oh, five rounds. Fire for effect. Fire for effect. When the guns are all accurate on the target, and it's time for them to unleash the rest of the rounds they have dedicated to that spot. Fire for effect. A method of firing in the artillery that is basically exactly what you want as a gunner to hear across the radio. When you hear fire for effect, you know it's go time. You need to get those rounds through that barrel and onto target as quickly as humanly possible and as accurately as possible. It is so much fun. There's nothing that makes the blood pump through my veins better than hearing fire mission, battery, and then fire for effect. Those two things that you hear just get you so riled up. And it's, I can't explain it. it it's really hard to explain until you expose this kind of environment and the teamwork, the camaraderie, and the passion for being a gunner, and you hear those things on the net, and you know what your job is, and everything works like clockwork, it is the most rewarding and satisfying feeling I've ever had. You know, as a tank mechanic, it was rewarding repairing tanks, and, you know, providing that customer support, basically like a service technician. Even on the front line, when you know you've got a tank that's run over an ID, blown his tracks off, you have to get him back on the road quickly so he can, you know, do his mission. It's the same for the artillery, though, but in, in my basis, when I pull that lanyard or I'm punching rounds in that breach or when I'm laying in the gun, it just really hits me hard. And maybe that's a bit weird. Some of you are like, this guy's a freak, but that's okay. I, I, I will stand to that. I'll stand my ground and say that it's the most rewarding and satisfying feeling being part of that gun line, being part of that team, dashing around, putting rounds down range accurately on target, being the first on the gun line set up, all these things that just reinforce exactly why being a gunner is so amazing and so much fun uh, because at the end of the day we don't just do this because we want a job and if you're doing it for just that then you know i don't know maybe you have your own reasoning but for me if i don't get that satisfaction of doing the job and having that purpose but when you get fire for effect and you're like okay now this is serious now we've actually located the target We've honed in our rounds to actually hit that point. We need to continue firing as quickly as we can to 
destroy and neutralize the enemy as much as possible. So, you know, when you become a gunner, if any of you are wishing to become a gunner, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about the day you hear across that on the net. Fire for effect. I love the sound of artillery. Love that sound. And the smell that comes up afterwards. The smell of that cordite. So it's day two. Today's going to be a little bit different. We did a lot of indirect firing yesterday, but now pretty soon the guns are going to start moving, going to start packing up, and we're going to head over to start doing some direct action shooting, a bit more intense. So here we have the home of the artillery, almost the mobile home of the artillery, the MSVS. This is an artillery version of the MSVS, which is basically a very large truck that has a cab attached, extended cab attached to the middle of it to allow the artillery gunners to operate from inside of it quickly and effectively to get out. Now, this is really where you're going to be living for the majority of your time when out in the field as a gunner. Unless you're on some of the other disciplines, as I mentioned, the observation post or recce tech command post, you'll be in your own specific smaller vehicles. But as a gunner, roar on the gun line, this is where you're going to be living, folks. This is what you're going to be getting everything off of. Really nice to have. Of course, we're not like the infantry that, you know, carry everything in and out of battle. We do have the advantage of having the truck. That doesn't make something easier, though. It sometimes can be just as hard. There is a lot of heavy equipment coming on and off of this truck, as simple as a cam net. Cam nets to cover a gun position are huge, they're massive, they're heavy, they're cumbersome, they're a pain in the ass, uh, but they are, you know, part of what you need to do. And all that equipment you have on the back there is very stringent upon, you know, double checking everything, making sure you've got everything. As many times I've come off the gun line, um, and, you know, someone in another vehicle has said like, oh, we forgot this, and it's happened on our vehicle too. We all make mistakes. But this is where you're going to live. It's a great bit of kit. It works very, very well. Uh, the loadout on the back is something to be desired. It's a little strange in which the configuration of the, uh, you know, the storage in the back of the MSVS is made. It was actually designed by a chef, which is a little different. But uh, for us as the artillery, it works very effectively. So get used to being, you know, working off the back of a truck almost. You can see again though my relation to being a little laissez-faire and taking it easy. These gunners are obviously in a training environment. They've been told to kind of take it a little bit more easy. But in a real setting when you're breaking down a gun line, everything is as fast as possible. You are going to be burning calories like crazy. You're going to be tired. You're going to be exhausted. And then once you've closed everything up and you're in the back of the truck, you can kind of rest for a couple of minutes before you get to the next position where you have to reverse it and do everything again. Get everything out. It is super high, fast paced. You're going to be working hard. So don't think in the artillery, oh, I can be lazy because I'm just going to be pulling the lanyard. It's just as hard as any other physical activity you do in the army, if not more, because the infantry give us a hard time. Yeah, you guys are lazy. You have your trucks and all that good stuff. But you put an infantryman in a deploying of the gun position for a few days, uh, doing, you know, setting up and tearing down the gun line, I guarantee you they're going to take a second opinion on that. So you need to keep your fitness up. You want to be a gunner. It's not one of those jobs that just because you're working off the back of that truck, you get to laze around. We're just taking down the gun position now before we move to the next one. Each gun crew will need to pack away stores and equipment, still being ready to fire until the very last moment. So as he said, the gun line still needs to fire up until the very last moment. The last thing that will be packed away is obviously the gun. When you're tearing down your position, it's not, let's just get the gun torn down and we don't need to fire anymore. Anything can happen. There's been instances where I'm tearing the gun down and, you know, all of a sudden it's like, stop what you're doing, fire mission battery. Get the ammunition back off, get the gun ready to fire. Everything should still be in place, the gun's laid in, everything recorded so that you can continue on with the mission. Just because you're about to go doesn't mean that you're still not effectively able to fire. So, you know, a lot of people think that when you're starting to tear things down, you can kind of get relaxed and cool down. If anything, it's the most intensive point of, you know, being a gunner because you're in limbo. You're either packing half of your stuff that you need to do away or you're fully ready to go. It's that middle ground of, okay, where are we at here? What's about to happen? It's a little scary because you don't want to have to, you know, interrupt your process to put rounds down range. But 
We have to move, and that's how we work in the artillery. We shoot and scoot. We don't stay in a position for too long. We have to relocate, because eventually the enemy will find that position and return fire, which is why that sense of urgency is so important. So, you know, when you are tearing down the gun, you're going to leave that gun on position to the very last moment, and then you will pull away and take it away with you to the next position. So, these troops are doing all non-essential stores primarily, then ammunition, and then if they're given the cease firing, they're going to get their gun loaded onto the back of the truck. And as I said, again, it is a lot of hard work, but it's so much fun. Once you get the clockwork of the team tearing and setting up down properly, it's just incredibly rewarding. Cease firing. When cease firing is given, that's when all the guns start packing up. The race begins to see which gun position can get out of the gun area fast enough so that they can be the first ones onto the next platform. So you see this gentleman in the top left here? Does he look like someone who's being lazy? Absolutely not. And again, reinforces the fact that this is a very physically demanding job. It's also a job that encompasses a lot of safety. You need to be so freaking careful when you're operating heavy pieces of equipment and metal like this. You can lose a finger, a hand, an arm extremely quickly if you don't respect this equipment. Because as you can see, these troops are working hard to get this gun up. Just rotating things around and locking it in place with pins, locks, catches. Closing things up of high speed because everything's done so fast. If you're not doing it effectively and say your fitness isn't very high and you're just exhausted after the first five minutes of starting to break down in gun position, your judgment and your, you know, decision making process may not be of effective because you're too busy breathing out your butt because you're so tired, right? So get your fitness up, folks. I can't reinforce it enough. The artillery is extremely extremely demanding physical position uh, in the army and I, I want to make sure that you're not going to go in there thinking that you're just going to get a, an easy ride because it's not okay let's go you see a good job bang on so this is what direct action is like. When the guns are lined up, the barrels are pretty much level to the ground, and they're trying to shoot to hit targets just right over there. If that was an enemy charging over the hill, getting the barrels level and firing them accurately is the best way for the artillerymen to stay safe. So this is one of the more fun sides and the enjoyable sides of being a gunner in actually firing of the gun. Open action, sniping of the gun, actually being able to direct fire onto targets. Oh wow, is it a lot of fun. You know, as indirect fire when we're firing on bearings, you're not normally going to see the projectiles hitting on target. That's going to be the observation post's primary location. They're going to see those rounds impacting. But when you're doing open action, when you're doing sniping the guns, things like that, you actually are able to see the rounds land on position that you're firing at. You can see in the distance in this picture, they've got some targets up, looks like some fake tank wooden targets. It is really rewarding when you're actually working as a crew, firing the gun and seeing those projectiles hit on target. That's impressive. Uh, it's just also a bit of a competitive bound as well, because when you're doing these open actions, you're seeing targets that are in the distance. Everyone's watching, right? Everyone on the entire gun line is watching you as a gun position uh, know if you're going to hit that target or not. It takes a lot of skill, takes a lot of practice. However, there is a very simplistic methodology to actually engage targets in this kind of configuration of direct fire. We also have our tank optic that we can sometimes use. Very rarely, I've never really used it in firing. I would like to, it'd be a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, Watching rounds explode and hit those, you know, those potential targets, it's just, it's incredible. And everybody has a bit of sort of general banter, I guess, you know, competition with the, each gun position to see who's going to hit round on target first. Because uh, it is a little bit of a skill, as I said. If you're going to miss, everybody gives you a bit of a jeer and a bit of a ooh. So it's fun. It, it has a lot of, a lot of uh, reward to it with that sense. But it's also very serious, right? This is very very risky kind of operation because you are so close to the enemy that they can see you and as a gun position you don't get to drive away right you're firing until the mission is done if you get engaged you're getting shot at you will continue putting rounds through that gun no matter what if you're losing people beside you people are getting engaged you will keep firing the gun that is part of what we do we don't just abandon the gun we keep going until the very last man and and it's important that you know that because our guns are our colors we don't have flags in the artillery 
uh, that we use as our battle honors, our battle colors. Our colors are the gun, and we respect the gun wholeheartedly, so we will never abandon our gun. And this is the kind of scenario where it kind of brings that uh, embodiment of being a gunner, right? This is my gun, you're not coming to take it, I'm going to put some rounds down on you, you can put some on me, and I'm going to keep fighting. So when you do these kind of fire missions with direct impact, uh, you know, fire, it, it's just, yeah, it gets the hairs on the back of your neck standing up, that's for sure. Maybe you can see the smoke in the background from where they're shooting. This competition is putting them up shooting rounds really fast, competing against each other for who can hit that target first. So that's the sound of them pulling the lanyard, firing the round off. Does that mean they're the ones that pulled the trigger? Or is the one who pulled the trigger the forward observer, calling it in over the radio? Or is it the command post, sending the orders out to the guns to fire? I'm not too sure. Maybe that's too philosophical. I actually really enjoy this scene because he raises some pretty valid points and something I've never truly thought of. Who is it that is actually engaging and, and firing the trigger from the gun? Yes, when we pull the lanyard, we're firing the trigger and actually sending the weapon and the artillery, the projectile downrange. But the process before then could just as much be indicated as pulling of the trigger. When the OP is asking to fire at that target, the key is turned and the engine is started back at the battery. It's everything starting to move. And it's, you know, it can be interrupted. You can turn the key off of the ignition again. You know, pause the process of pulling of that trigger. But the same applies at the command post, right? At the command post, they are preparing to send data to the guns. Is that also in some respect pulling of the trigger um, but finally the person on the gun position right giving that direction once sent from the command post to fire from the number one telling his number two to pull the lanyard is that pulling of the trigger or is it finally the number two actually pulling the lanyard which is the string or the rope that we attach to the trigger of the actual artillery piece the howitzer that we're pulling we don't have a trigger like we do on a rifle with a pistol grip and a trigger our trigger is the lanyard um, that we pull on the gun so at that point there's no real turning back once you've pulled that lanyard the projectile will fly and it will one way or another hit the target uh, or not hit the target so it's a, just an interesting philosophy and i like the way you kind of raised it because it does put a little bit of question into your head is that who is actually the one destroying the enemy you know at the end of the day though it's everyone the battery works together we're a family the whole process together is one big engine working um you know unanimously to make sure the target's destroyed in my eyes everyone pulls the trigger there's so many different parts in this process of the artillery everyone has their part everyone's involved in some way So, there you have it everyone. A bit of a long-winded video today, I apologize. We're almost at 40 minutes. It's a long video for you to take on. But for those of you who are seriously passionate about the artillery, I hope you took something away from today's video. Once again, thank you to 2nd Lieutenant uh, Lloyd here and the 15th Field Regiment and 3-9 Brigade and the Canadian Armed Forces for providing this video. I think it's a fantastic way to promote what I'm passionate about and what the regiment is passionate about, being a gunner and doing what we need to do as part of the all arms battle really really cool to see the footage was incredible the way in which they portrayed this you know core function as an artillery unit really really well done i hope you took a little bit away from what i was telling you too uh, i could really just talk about this for hours and hours on end and you know maybe one day i'll do a live stream specifically relatable to the artillery and how you know things work and you can ask me questions and i'll try my best to answer them but i just wanted to give a little bit more of a raw feel of you know as a gunner what you can expect and things that you can involve yourself with you know from a high level you do have a lot of different options to you if you want to be a part of the regiment you know whether it be a technical side of things the brawn of the gun line you know the physical side getting involved and just putting projectiles in that breach sending them down range 
lots of different options for you. So if you are interested in joining the artillery or the Canadian forces in general, please, please reach out to a recruiter. You can speak to me. You can speak to the social media network that's now really doing well on Facebook and all sorts of different avenues, Twitter and things like that. I really would encourage you to do so because um, I would love to you to be part of my family, my extended family here in the Canadian Armed Forces. And I'm proud of what I do, I'm passionate about what I do, and I would love to have that reciprocated upon those who have the interest in doing it also. So thank you for joining me again today. It really does mean a lot. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Those who are aspiring to join, good luck to you. Those who are already in and part of the Canadian Armed Forces, Hats off to you all. Thank you for your service. And uh, I will see you on the next video in the future. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos from my channel, please, please, I would encourage you to click that little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified. Check the description box below for all my other social media and, and links there, including Facebook, uh, my Patreon, if you wish to donate or support towards my channel. I would really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who has been doing so. I also have my Discord channel on there, so you can have some one-on-one -on -one chats, then you can do that also. I'll catch you around again, folks. All the best, and you beak!